Really, the goal is just to use our stories to bring veterinary medicine to life for the pet caretakers of the world. Uh, and we're doing it because we believe that educating these caretakers is the most powerful thing that we can do to improve the life quality of all of the pets that we love. All right. Welcome back. This is Dr. Natalie Keith. And this is Dr. Jessica Eastup. And this is Vet Tales. Today, I bring in Dr. Eastup because we are talking about something in her wheelhouse, which is totally surgery related. Yes. Do you want to, do you want to tell them? Yeah. So we're going to be talking about foreign bodies, um, which kind of sounds funky, like you said earlier. Yeah, yeah. This is to be, we're just going to be really transparent right off the bat. This is our second time recording this <laughs> because the tech struggles I've been having the last couple months are so for real. So anyway, yes. Yeah, so we were talking about how foreign bodies sounds a little bit like a UFO. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, I, and it kind of is an unidentified foreign object. Yes, just not in the sky. <laughs> yeah, just not flying, even, Yeah, probably. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, something went wrong. Yes, very wrong. So f- what is a foreign body? It's basically something that your dog or cat eats, and it's in their GI tract, and it's not supposed to be. Yeah, um, foreign to the body. Yes. So, you know, socks, cloth, metal, bones, toys, toys you name it they can eat it yeah my favorite yeah. one ever was a uh we had this great pyrenees anatolian cross and um she swallowed an entire turtle she, the whole what? shell like it was an empty shell like in the in yeah. the bottom of the little you know the carapace whatever had a hole in it or whatever um but i don't know how she swallowed it like it was a, i mean it was probably I mean, five and a half inches in diameter like I, I don't understand but there it was yeah that, in her tummy that is intense <laughs> yeah so that was foreign i mean i was just gonna say a whole pair of pants oh yeah Small hole. <laughs> yeah you did have that one yeah. yeah they were jersey shorts yes and they were intact yes which is like odd. that process can you imagine yeah. the discomfort of trying to swallow that all down uh, dogs and cats dogs do some crazy thing they yeah. do i mean once you start though you kind of got to commit yeah yeah you're not wrong. <laughs> you just gotta keep going. <laughs> you gotta keep going. <laughs> anyway, so um, basically, this is something we see a lot. So we thought we would talk today through kind of like, you know, what, how does this start? What do we see? What do we do? When do we know to go to surgery and so forth? Right, yeah. So why don't you tell us what is your kind of classic like case that you think you would be worried about a potential foreign body? Right. Yeah. So a lot of times, um, it's usually a young dog or cat or a puppy or a kitten um they're more likely to not care about what they eat Mm -hmm. as much exploring Um, yes as they adventure through life um and they'll whether you may know they ate it or you may not know they ate it um i know my puppy eats stuff all the time yeah well i do know (laughs) the jersey short people they had no idea that it had eaten anything right so um then they may start vomiting um and they may or may not be eating um dogs a lot of times still feel good enough to eat depending on where the foreign body is in the body um but vomiting not eating um acting sick maybe having diarrhea not all the time though um especially if there's a full blockage yeah Uh, but generally feeling unwell yeah sometimes painful in the belly sometimes not yeah again depending on where the object is stuck at yeah um and if it's in the stomach um they may intermittently vomit they yep. may intermittently keep food down, um, yeah, and they usually tend to feel better overall. Yes. Um, whereas if something's stuck in the intestinal tract, um, that tends to be more painful um, because it's a the tighter body, squeeze. Yeah, the body yeah. can't move it along. It might be cutting off blood supply. Whole slew of things could be going on there. Yeah, and it'll cause distension in front of it, and mm-hmm. we, you know, we all know how uncomfortable it can feel to be overly distended right. in your GI tract, and so that is um, those dogs seem or cats seem much, much sicker than ones with just something floating around in the tummy. Right, yeah. So. So kind of, you know, especially with these younger dogs and cats, my first thought is, "Mm, we might have a foreign body. So my first step is to take them to x-ray. Yep. um, And see, is there anything that we can obviously find on x-ray? And there may or may not be. Some things pop up. They're very obvious. Um, Metal, certain cloths. Bone. Bone. Corn on the cob. Corn on the cob. Yes, happens a lot. Um, so some things are very obvious and you say, well, we need to go get that. Yeah. Um, but not everything is, and it just might look suspicious. Yeah. Um, but not very specific. Yeah. Like the gas patterns, like we were talking about, sometimes they'll be overly distended or have weird fragmentation of the Mm. gas and that, that tells you things are not moving through normally, even if you can't exactly see what's causing 
with the holdup. Right. So if that's kind of what we're looking at, um, our next step after that would be a barium study. Yep. Um, which is where we give them um, barium. I uh, love barium. Yeah, I love barium too. It just helps so many ways. It does. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That which it does not diagnose, it treats, as yes. we say. So um, barium is very bright white on x-ray. It's radio opaque. And so we give it to them, feed it to them. Um, and it basically goes throughout their GI tract, highlighting the entire GI tract. And ideally in a normal animal, it would go all the way to the colon, no problems. Um, but in these animals with foreign bodies, it might stop. Yeah. Um, yeah. It it could, or get absorbed by something. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, or, you know, kind of little bits go through, but not a lot. Yes. Um, so it can be really um, helpful in figuring out if there's foreign body or even a if twist. Yeah, or and yeah, or in a susception, yep. which is where the intestines will slinky on top of each other. Yep. Um, and then sometimes it diagnoses things that are not an obstruction, like gastric ulcers. So, right, yeah. But, which is always nice to kind of get yeah. some clarity. Yeah, and because ulcers present a lot like gastric Like a, foreign like a stomach yeah. foreign body, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, kind of looking at that, if we say, hey, there's a blockage here, we need to go in, our next step is surgery. Yeah. Which is definitely um, what I punt to you and Dr. Trussell mm-hmm. immediately. Yeah. I usually take care of the front half of that and then send them to surgery. Um, so can you kind of walk people through what is an X-lap? What are you you know, doing? What's the goal? What are some problems you run into or so forth? Yeah. So an X-lap is short for an exploratory laparotomy, um, which is basically a big word for saying we go in and explore explore the <laughs> yes. tummy so we look around um for these kiddos that are going to surgery of course we um do pre-anesthetic blood work place catheter anesthetize them sterilely prep the area and then open up their abdomen surgically um, and we go in and take a look around um, if we know there's something in the stomach um, of course we would go into the stomach but one of the first things you want to do is um, run the intestines yep. which is basically we look at every single loop of intestine to make sure there isn't another foreign body Thing. or something wrong yeah. um, going on. So Big we, lymph nodes yes. or areas of compromised blood flow, right. yeah. tumors even, you know, yeah. which will obviously be our older dogs. But still, I mean, these are all things yeah. that we find. Yeah, and especially in our older dogs. Fungal even infections. If we, yeah, even if we know they have a foreign body, we still look at every other organ in the abdomen. Absolutely. Because if you're in there, you need look. to be looking. Yeah. Yes. So, um, you know, we find where the foreign body is if we don't already know where it's at. Um, and from there, um, open up either the stomach or the intestines and pull it out. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, stomach's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, um, it's I easier to access. More. It's yeah. a little less terrifying. Yes. You've got a little more forgiveness in the blood flow. Yeah, it's bigger. Um, yeah. And they tend to be less painful with the stomach. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, one of my big fears, you know, sending pets in, to, especially if they've been painful for a couple of days, is if an entire area mm-hmm. has lost blood flow and has died. Right. And you have to do what we call a resection and an astomosis. Yes. Yeah. So that's where basically the surgeon, i.e. not me, is going in and taking out a section of intestines and then splicing it back together. You can think of like an electric cord where you're yeah. literally having to put, put the tubes back together. Back together. Yeah. Which is wild. Yeah. So that we can even do that. Just kind of crazy. And and sometimes it works, but depending on how severe it is, yeah. it may not. Yeah, and, and why it was there in the first place, right. you know, and yeah. how long it's been there and so forth, because right. uh, those can be really scary situations. Yeah. So, uh, and the interceptions, I think, are the, the ones that are most likely to cause that, where, mm-hmm. again, like that in, intestine is feeding into itself. So it's like, like a sock folded up on top of itself. Yeah. And that whole area will be compromised, and then it can create sepsis or infection right. throughout the whole body, and those patients are wildly unstable. Right. Or they perforate. Yeah, and then once yeah. they perforate or, op- like, if the intestine starts leaking, essentially, then we get sepsis that way and peritonitis, yeah. which means inflammation of the lining of the organs in the abdomen, and those patients are miserable, and it's super touch and go. Yeah, yeah. So always, you know, sooner rather than later mm-hmm. um, on any kid that's vomiting or having GI upset. Yeah, it reminds me of that one dog that we both had that had the ulceration that was a full through yeah. and through ulceration through the stomach. And the dog had, I think, um, had an 
accidental overdose of anti-inflammatories mm -hmm. and had perforated and was leaking stomach liquid into the abdomen for some period of I don't know, three or four days and it's like it was a like a goldeny lab kind of dog mm -hmm. and so owners were like i mean dogs throw up sometimes yeah. you know and then by the third day this dog is like wildly lethargic and that yeah. that was a crazy yeah crazy situation it was so. weird looking at i actually thought it was a tumor <laughs> yeah because yeah. there was so much inflammation so around much it. inflammation yeah. and it was rock hard around that tissue mm -hmm. so the body was trying to wall it off but it was just too big of a hole right. to wall off on its yeah. own so so that patient went to surgery i mean we've seen some some, some crazy things, some crazy yeah. things. Yeah. um and then sometimes you'll have the worst case for me is when you are like 98 percent sure you've got a foreign body mm -hmm. and the animal's sick enough that you can't keep waiting to be sure sure and you take them to surgery and it's not, not a foreign there. body mm -hmm. um those are super frustrating but what i have found is a lot of times even through the biopsies and such that we'll do in lieu of that we still mm -hmm. end up getting to our answer right. like ibd or inflammatory bowel disease even i had a cat like that but it ended up being lymphoma right. that we got from that biopsy so you can still get so much information from these x laps even if it isn't truly a foreign right. body yeah i think two times that's happened to me it has been cats yeah um, cats are tricky little they are creatures tricky. and they're terrifying because they will get linear foreign bodies like string or yarn and yeah. it will create this like sawing effect they'll all accordion to accordion yeah all the intestines will accordion on each other because the intestines are trying to contract and squish things out right but if it's hung up like in the stomach or typically around the tongue mm -hmm. then it's like as the intestines are trying to pull it down it's like scrunching right. it up the string instead and it will actually cut through the intestines right. across a long span of intestines so cats that are vomiting and are painful in the abdomen are extra scary yeah definitely want to see them immediately yes um and but like you said the few times it hasn't been it's been a cat that you've done a biopsy on and, and found something it found something else different yeah yeah that so still needed but um wasn't an obvious foreign body yeah 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 and then the torsions are another really common ones mm -hmm. and dogs where it'll look like a foreign body because you've got this outflow obstruction right. kind of look but what's actually happened is the intestines have done a complete 180 rotation mm -hmm. around their main blood supply and so if you don't off. get to those soon enough you can lose that entire section of intestines and so those are always um, a huge relief when you get in there and realize you've gotten to it in time right yeah so. yeah my mom's dog actually um he had a foreign body and my mom waited about a week and a half uh -oh. <laughs> and um I was frustrated at the time because <laughs> I was a vet student and I was like, mom, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, but her dog ended up having 14 inches of intestine removed, but she's doing great. Yay. <laughs> now, yeah. 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 It's but, fixable. It just gets harder to fix. Yeah. As time goes yeah. on. Yeah. And depending on sometimes they stay and then they move and then they stay and then. Yeah. It's, they can all be so variable. Yeah. But sooner rather than later. So the, then let's just say we get our dog into surgery or cat as it were and we fix whatever the problem was, remove whatever foreign body, then what does recovery look like? Yeah, so definitely we always keep them overnight, at least one night, yeah. depending on how the surgery went, um, how sick they are, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, but, I mean, it's at least a two-week recovery period of yeah. keeping them calm, keeping them quiet. Yeah, and typically what I tell my internal medicine patients, it, like, because I'll send them to you guys for surgery and they come back to me, mm -hmm. I will say as soon as they can eat and poop, they can go home. They yeah. got to do those two things before right. they can leave. Yeah. And for a good reason, because if, you know, you go home and it's night and something happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because the biggest concern when you've opened up the intestines is like if the digestive enzymes within the mm -hmm. GI tract dissolves your suture, you can have what we call dehiscence mm -hmm. and start leaking. And then we have a very sick patient. Right. So I haven't actually had that happen, but mm -hmm. it is you know, well-documented potentials, you know, yeah. side effect or sequela of this, yeah. this surgery. And so you just have to watch them and right. keep them rested. And they're going a lot. I put them on easy to digest foods, mm -hmm. kind of pre-broken down. Small meals. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, a lot of times we'll do canned for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I was always taught three to five days is of your um, time uh, for if dehiscence is going to happen. Yes. Yeah, three in that, to five days. Yeah. So, um, really, in that five day window, you're really Watching. keeping a close eye on him. Um, yeah. 
to make sure that, you know, that doesn't fall apart um, because those digestive enzymes, they're doing their job, which yeah. is breaking stuff down. Um, so suture is something they can break down. Yeah. You know? We're like, we don't need your help yeah. today. <laughs> Just mind your own beeswax. But you really do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just not for this. Stay yes. out of my sutures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, mercy. So then, yeah, then it's like a lot of, um, monitoring you know and like okay, so I had a this doctor didn't have to go to surgery but it was yesterday the day before a, it was yesterday because it was raining and I had a lady come in uh with her great Dane puppy that's like four months old and he had thrown up rocks that morning oh my gosh <laughs> yeah and so we did an x-ray and he had managed to throw up or she it was a girl she managed to throw up all the rocks out of her stomach but then her colon was loaded with rocks oh man so we actually did an enema for her mm-hmm. to get the rest of the rocks kind of broken up and out and um and she did really well but the owner was like simultaneously like, while we're doing an enema she's on like amazon buying every size of muzzle because a 16 week old great dane is gonna yeah. go through every size yeah. oh, no. I mean, she's like what size do you oh, think and i was like medium today large in two weeks yep. extra large next month and hopefully by the time we're in xxl we were over the habit oh, of no. picking up rocks were they so, big rocks some of them were big like river stones like i would say it's they impressive. were probably two inches long was the biggest one but a lot of them were small so lucky. i don't know lucky yeah, so yeah, they did they did all pass through. I don't know how some of them got through that pylorus, but they did. That's impressive. <laughs> and then she managed to throw up the ones that wouldn't fit. So, I mean, the body is I've seen dogs poop out like whole hand towels before. Oh yeah. Me too. Or hard things, plastic things, sharp things. Yeah. Um and if it gets like to the sharp colon, bits of plastic when they chew their toys up. Yes. And then like that had to be painful. No doubt. Um, no doubt. But if it gets to the colon, I'm happy. Very yeah. rarely can it not leave the body yes <laughs> yeah the one there. time that i typically will struggle with that is the um uh, so you know those uh those bones that are like um like the i don't know if they're like the femur of a cow or mm-hmm. something but it's got the yeah. little condyles on the end like the soft yeah. chewy bits or whatever and those dogs it's like cartilage and the dogs will eat that all in one setting mm-hmm. and then it will turn into like this concrete in the colon so i've had to do several like i mean it is like concrete blocks to break that stuff down oh. uh it is so gritty and it just like all the little bits kind of mesh back together into this little concrete brick oh. um and so i always caution people on those i let my dogs chew on like the the mm-hmm. bones that you buy but um i get the ones that are sawed off that don't have the ends on them right. and then if they crack those you need to throw them away immediately right. because those shards are not going to break down well and you're going to yeah. have ouchies yeah. and even for bones that do break down well they can still irritate the lining of the GI tract for a lot of animals. Yeah, some, we had that little great. one um, just this week. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the little terrier dog that had the tiny... Um, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah she had yeah. this tiny little sliver of bone in there, and it was just irritating the fire out of her, but it wasn't really to the point where we needed to do surgery. Mm-hmm. I rechecked her yesterday, yesterday, and it was like half the size already, and she nice. was feeling better. Good. Yeah. So it's like, you know, sometimes you kind of can just ride the wave on that. Right, yeah. And... Uh, on that note, you know, some sometimes we might wait. Yeah. Um, especially for gastric foreign bodies. Those are not necessarily emergencies. Yeah. Um, because if it's stuck in the stomach, then we know exactly where it is. Um, and, yeah, and, and it'll just roll around in there causing intermittent problems, but it doesn't, it's not life-threatening. Right. Like a small intestinal obstruction yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, those might, we might say, Hey, we'll do that tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, or, or if they're really dehydrated, you know, we'll, we'll put them on mm-hmm. fluids first. And, right. Um, so don't be surprised if that happens. Um, yeah. Because those they're not all a matter of like minutes right to now. hours. Like, yeah. yeah, right now. Yeah. Sometimes you just, it's best to wait. Right. Yeah. And sometimes we're waiting because we're curious to see if the dog can fix it on its own, especially dogs. Um, yeah. Cats are less likely to fix it on their own. Oh yeah, Definitely. We had an English bulldog once that we pulled like twelve pacifiers out of, out all all of them floating around in his stomach. And the owners, we like bring out this baggie, and they're like, oh, "There they are!" <laughs> you know that they yeah. just been like checking under every couch cushion oh, no. and behind the crib, like where are all the Having binkies? Having to buy more. <laughs> yeah, buying. Did you, did you did you get this week's supply of binkies? Yeah. And oh. the dog's been eating them the whole time. The dogs will eat anything. And then I had a cat with eighteen hair ties once. I think my cat has hair ties. I'm convinced. <laughs> he just, when he was a kitten, he used to eat them all the time. He hasn't had any GI upset, but I'm convinced. Yeah. Well, okay. So that's another great point. So let's say you did watch your dog mm-hmm. eat something or your cat. What do you do? 
Right. Um, well, it depends on what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but let's, immediately yeah. see a vet. <laughs> yeah. Let's say, well, let's just say that we swallowed, um, you know, that we were, we chewed off part of, um, of a sock and mm. swallowed it. You know, I typically tell owners, wait for GI signs. Right. Because if they are not having upset stomach or diarrhea or pain in the abdomen, if they're still eating and drinking normally and pooping normally, leave them alone. Right. They're likely going to pass it. They're likely going to pass it. If they're not it. having symptoms. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the exceptions to that rule will be like batteries. Mm-hmm. Caustic pen- things. Caustic things, pennies, toxins, yeah. medicine. Right. Things like that we definitely need to yeah but we're talking about like plastic rubber cloth things like that you know if they chew up chewed off the the knob on the end of their toy wait right if we start having vomiting we start being painful we stop eating we start having diarrhea any of those things now you need to go to the vet yeah for sure and i've heard stories of gastric foreign bodies again like i said not really truly an emergency because they'll say, oh, that went missing years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and it just sits there. And it never really caused a problem. Yeah. Um, and The body will protect so it itself the best it can. Yeah. So it is interesting what they can get away with. Yeah. There was another dog we had that had um, eaten the insole of a man's dress shoe. So, like, you know how they'll have, like, that leather bit down at the yeah. toe? And it would, like get intermittent vomiting because it would throw up and then the the piece of leather would just float around for a few days and then eventually it would get sucked to the bottom of the drain pipe again and it would cause throwing up again and so this went on for a couple of weeks and it looked really normal on barium Mm -hmm. and everything finally did an endoscope and saw the piece of leather in there and had to go get it surgically so we do sometimes scope and scope's a great option um ours is more just a view yeah we Um, don't have the the pincher grabber biopsy ones and not everything you can pull back out no. Um, the esophagus. It's like those arcade games where you've got to get the ball yes. with that, with that, with the claw, the yes. claw. <laughs> pick, trying to get, pick up that stuffed animal or And try to pull it yeah. through. Come on. Yeah. It's just not going to work. It takes a, a lot of skill and it. Endoscope, that's not our endoscope, because ours is mostly for visualizing what's in the stomach. Yeah, but, but even the pincher ones, they just don't have a ton of strength in it for pulling right. something backwards up out of the stomach right. and through the esophagus. Yeah. And because it's, there's a lot of pressure um, it's well. a lot, yeah, and it's also like those things are absorbed with fluid now, mm-hmm. and it's just they're heavy and they're dilated, distended. Mm-hmm. It's just not likely to, yeah. But it's we do it a lot of times when we're not sure if we need to cut or not. Right, right. So the scope is still handy at times, yeah. only for the stomach though. It can't go. Yeah, I mean, it's depending on the that. size of the animal, you can kind of get the proximal intestine, but beyond that, not not as much. Not no. as much. Nope. Yeah. So, anyway, so you're hoping that some of your other diagnostic processes have right. gotten you where you needed to go. Yeah. So, basically, you know, those are your, your three options for intestinal surgery. Gastrotomy, which is opening the stomach. Uh, an enterotomy, which is opening the intestines. Or an RNA, which yeah. is a resection and anastomosis. Yeah. Um, but other reasons we do X-laps um, are to biopsy. Yes. If yeah. we see something funky on ultrasound or on x-ray. Yeah. Um, something if we think it's fungal infection or bacterial or cancerous. Yeah. Or just weird. Yeah. 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 Cancer's, uh, one of the big ones that we do X laps over. So we'll take spleens out, biopsy livers, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Biopsying the intestines like Mm -hmm. crazy lymph nodes that are big in there. Yeah. And the same for fungal. It's kind of the same thing. Or if you have unknown reasons for peritonitis. Mm -hmm. They're just, I don't know. There's a myriad of reasons you might find yourself needing to go into X laps, but by far and large, foreign bodies take the cake. Yes, they do. Uh, that and GDVs. We don't see a lot of them, oh. but that's GDVs a, that's are an terrifying. Yeah. Um, yeah, we see that mostly in Great Danes and Dobermans, mm-hmm. where the stomach is essentially uh, rotating a full 360 degrees and therefore cutting off its own blood supply mm-hmm. and causing dilation or the dil. Anyway, you know, we're, yeah. we've got this giant air ball of stomach that's flipped around, cutting off blood flow yeah to, to the itself stomach. and the spleen and a lot of times it's it's causing cotyledonic cava pressures mm-hmm. to drop so blood's not circulating through the animal itself yeah. well and those are emergencies yes, and many of them die yes unfortunately um because it cuts off so much blood supply all at once mm-hmm. i mean you have minutes to get in there and honestly basically. yeah they'll yeah. die within a couple of hours so it's it's terrifying um so a lot of times they uh, recommend on those breeds that are predisposed Great Danes are the poster child, but any deep-chested dog, right. um, it could happen to. I've seen it. I saw it in an old basset hound once. I saw it in a dachshund. 
Yeah, so it can yeah. happen, but I feel like in old, old dogs, it can happen in m- any breed. But the young ones, it's typically the Great Dane. Mm-hmm. And uh, so a lot of times they'll re- recommend what's called a gastropexy, where you actually take part of the stomach wall and sew it to the lining of the abdomen so that it cannot flip right. around. Yeah. It's stuck. Prevent that. Yeah. Um, save a lot of Save a lot, a lot of lives that way. Yeah. yeah. So that, like, it's spayed and neuter time. A lot mm-hmm. of times they'll do the gastropexies. Yeah. It's a good time to do it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, best time. Because you're already under anesthesia anyway. Especially in a spay. You're right. You're already in there. You're already in the abdomen. Yep. So. Yep. That's another option. But. Um, so, yeah. Try to keep the things up off the floors. But we. I like. I. No judgment from me. My German Shepherd. How he didn't have to have an X lap in his first <laughs> year and a half life is a mystery to me. I'm waiting for my Aussie now. He eats literally everything. My, yeah. I had 31 toys for my um, Border Collie. She, 31? She, yes. I know because he ate them all. <laughs> um, she she never chewed her toys. She always just played with them. But when we got our Aussie puppy, he destroys them all. And I every single toy, I found him yeah. half eaten and gone. And I was just waiting. Waiting. I know. For him to start showing I, signs. Uh, my 12-year-old pit bull, Max, that everybody knows and loves. Uh, if you don't know him, you would love him yes, if you did. Yes, would. <laughs> He got up onto my son's bed, who ha- my son had set his little Christmas, like, bag, like, you know, like, they get, like, a little stocking at yeah. school with all the candies in it. Sets it up on the bed. Max gets up there, eats everything, wrapper and all, and nobody knows no. he's done it until he then proceeds to, on yeah. the bed still, throw up all <laughs> wrappers and candy <laughs> onto the bed. Oh, so I was like, yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing you're loved, buddy. Yeah, and it came back up. It is a good thing it came back up. So, I don't know. You know, so I don't know if they ever outgrow it. Max, certainly, if it smells like food. It's in his mouth. (laughs) It's Yeah, it's going down. Yeah. So, so no judgment if you ever find yourself in that situation. And if you're ever not sure, just call us. Yeah. We'll help you troubleshoot it. Sooner rather than later. And Yeah. Safe than sorry. Yeah. That's exactly it. Sooner rather than later and better safe than sorry. Let's put that on a bumper sticker. (laughs) One of our many mottos. Yeah, one of our many. (laughs) Yes. I've I've got some other ones, but I can't think of them off the top of my head. Write them down. Yeah. (laughs) Let's start keeping a list. (laughs) Anyway. All right. Well, that's all we have for you on the foreign body subject. Um, But if y'all need us, uh, you know where to find us. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.